Hey everybody, this is Michael Smiley. I'm just doing another review video this time um, of the Star Wars Episode 9 The Rise of Skywalker trailer, teaser trailer. Um, a couple things I want to talk about that I'm really freaking excited about. Um, there's just so much that goes on inside of the teaser. I don't think that they should release like... <sighs> I'm kind of nervous about them releasing a trailer because I don't want spoilers. I want to be able to go to the theater and have the shock value just, you know, do its thing. Because I'm all about that. Um, but I'm really incredibly excited about this movie. First off, it's the last of the Skywalker storyline for the Star Wars. And so... Obviously, they have a lot of amazing things that happen, a lot of action and emotion scenes that go on in um, this teaser. And uh, they, first of all, I'm really excited about Lando coming in for this last awesome movie. Um, <clears throat> and I, I love that they got to use Leia footage that looks like it's actually part of the movie. And it didn't look out of place at all. It looked like she had actually filmed the movie too, which is really weird, but really awesome. And it the scene was emotional. And of course, John Williams' amazing score for Princess Leia or General Leia Organa was um, very touching, very beautiful, very emotional. And... Um, and at the, like, at the end of this teaser, the most exciting thing happens. So, it shows the remnants of what's left after the explosion of the Death Star. Like, they showed a little bit of whatever was left of the Death Star. Um, it's wreckage on a planet. Um... <clears throat> And then Luke says, no one is ever truly gone. Or something along those lines. And then the screen goes black and all you hear is Palpatine's evil menacing laugh. It is, that is so exciting. Ian McDormand is one of the most incredibly talented and most amazing actors ever on the planet, ever. The way that he plays Emperor Palpatine, he's just the most menacingly evil villains. He is the villain of cinema. Um, everyone hypes up uh, Darth Vader, which is, you know, awesome. And Darth Vader is terrifying, but he does have a good side. Uh, obviously, his redemption in Return of the Jedi. But Palpatine is one of those people who he he has no good sides. He is power hungry. He is for him, his power. Um, and I'm going to get into a lot of spoilers about the franchise because by now, if you haven't seen Star Wars movies, then that's your problem. Um, Palpatine single-handedly overthrew a government and made himself dictator. He single-handedly wiped out an entire Jedi Order that was so emotional and depressing and everything, but it sh really does show how powerful he is. And he's, he's like a god. Not God, but he is like a God, like as in his unlimited power. He's so powerful, so evil, so menacing. And Ian McDormand plays him so incredibly to it. Like, he is him. He was born to play that role, obviously. There is not one other person in the entire universe that can play this character. Because Ian McDormand already does. He is him end of story. I am so incredibly excited about this and it's so fitting to bring back 
the most iconic, most evil, and most challenging villain for their final movie to end out the Skywalker storyline. That is... Oh, I'm so excited, guys. I'm so excited. I don't even have words to describe how excited I am. Um, yeah. December is so far away, and I hate winter. And the only good thing about winter is Star Wars. Especially this one. Um, and with Palpatine alone... Palpatine alone, his character coming back to this movie alone, just outshines the last two movies. Like, they were great in their own way, and I know that this is an unpopular opinion, but I enjoyed um, The Last Jedi. Yes, I would have changed some stuff about it, but it wasn't as terrible as a lot of people made it out to be. Um, because it was... You know, and it's really crazy because when you think about it, <clears throat> so Palpatine is so powerful that he was able to use the Force to impregnate Shmi Skywalker to have Anakin. Because of that, it's not a far reach or a far stretch to have the ability to resurrect yourself. If you can create another being and literally a whole legacy about it, it should not be a shocker. I mean, it is a shocker because you'd never ever think in a million years that they would have brought Palpatine back, which is crazy. Um, but... Guys, the Star Wars stories are so amazing. But, um, like, The Last Jedi, in The Last Jedi, Luke even told Rey, you know, at the height, he, he basically said everything that I felt. Literally. When he was talking to Rey about the Jedi being so consumed with power themselves, at the height of their power, they were even blinded and overthrown by, and massacred by one Sith Lord. Well, actually, too, because, you know, Darth Vader was Palpatine's puppet and murdered everyone. But it was Palpatine's master plan that set everything in motion. The overthrow of the government, the overthrow of the Jedi Order. Um, he is the one that put the plans in motion for the creation of a clone army, which ended up um, turning out later on revamped to stormtroopers and everything like and the death star who would have thought just there's so many ideas and so much intelligence that goes behind his character so it's gonna be really really crazy to see how they bring the ultimate villain down if they do because like we've seen before star wars doesn't care if it it's not going to compromise its story to appease fans if it goes with their agenda, their story. And if Palpatine wins in the end, then Palpatine wins in the end. Uh, but if Palpatine does not win in the end, there's going to be a lot of death going on. Because he's just so powerful and so intelligent. And, uh, it's gonna be crazy, guys. It's insane. I can't believe, I mean, the laugh of the Emperor just gave me chills at the end. Because he's that evil. Like, <sighs> guys, it's gonna be a crazy Star Wars movie. And I loved how they had him on the Star Wars Celebration panel, and they had him, they saved him. To not come out until after they showed the trailer to shock all the fans. And then they brought him out on stage. And then he talked in his emperor voice to the crowd. And it was like so awesome. It was awesome to 
to wait for that little surprise, but it's such a surprise and such a great moment. And there, there is like, it's going to be wild. I'm almost completely speechless, but I wanted to make a video of this because I love the Star Wars series. I think that there is so much story, so much character development, so, so many, you know, who doesn't like the idea of, um, the idea of another galaxy running itself? and all these different types of cultures and aliens and cool planets and their ships and their their way of life and their governments and how they would run things and everything and i i love that um the way that george lucas did it he really intertwined uh mythology and history and he he took all those things and he made his own story out of a whole collage of history and, and mythology and everything and i love how he made it his own and made a story by picking pieces here and picking pieces there and making them fit just right and obviously uh, he he's just a mastermind, and he really did it so well. And I know that the prequels get a lot of flack, which I enjoyed them. Um, but um, that's because, like, realistically, I think a lot of it had to do with um, a lot of politics stuff going on um, and stuff like that. And I know that everyone hates Jar Jar and everything, but you'll get over it. Um, Jar Jar was comedy relief, obviously. Um, and he was really stupid, though. He was really stupid, I would give you that. Um, but, uh, I love how the prequel showed hundreds of Jedi, not just one or two. They, and it showed the entire story. It was the... It started with Palpatine. Palpatine was... I mean, without Palpatine, there would not have been an Anakin. There wouldn't have been a Leia. There wouldn't have been a Luke. There wouldn't be any Skywalkers because he's the one that created the very first one. Um, <clears throat> and he did because he foresaw, which is interesting, he foresaw everything besides his own death. Now, he told the story of Darth Plagueis of his master, Darth Plagueis, um, and how he was able to achieve um, the power to cheat death. And he taught his apprentice everything he knew, and then his apprentice killed him. So, um, obviously, Palpatine is powerful enough and intelligent enough to figure out immortality or cheating death and that's not a surprise i mean it is because it's you know episode six was so long ago <laughs> you it, it's in the back of your mind and you don't think about it until it happens which is why when he laughed in the trailer you're just like oh what is going on right now it's so shocking <clears throat> anyway um yeah, guys, so freaking excited. Um, the I was reading the comments underneath the tra the teaser trailer of uh, the Rise of Skywalker, and I love how somebody put Avengers Endgame be like we have Hulk, and then underneath it says. Star Wars 9 be like, we have a Palpatine. <laughs> I think that's so hysterical because it is so true, though. Um, I know that I'm going to get a little flack for this, but, like, seriously, Palpatine is way, uh, way more powerful than the Hulk, so, or 
pretty much anybody on Avengers Endgame. I know that Thanos is all big and bad and everything, but... <sighs> Palpatine can cheat death, and he is so powerful, he would take any anybody down to make sure that he was on top. To make sure that he was the top dog, the emperor, the... He was, you know... So... And I wasn't really impressed with Infinity War anyway, but... We'll see how Avengers Endgame comes out. I can't really judge it without seeing the movie. Or even this one. But the fact that um, Palpatine is back just... And that they have Leia and Lando and Luke. I mean... It's like watching an original Star Wars movie, but updated. Um, 40 some years later. And that's exciting because now we are the generation that gets to go to theater to the theaters and witness it firsthand for ourselves. Because everyone talks about I remember my first movie, I went and seen Star Wars and it was back at the Chinese theater or whatever and you're just like, you know, brag because that's nice and everything and it's awesome but you know now we have a generation that gets to experience the same magic. And I have all the faith in the world. And J.J. Abrams in this last one, um, faith completely restored after Palpatine. Um, so, and Lando, and what they did with Leia, oh my god, it's going to be so emotional. It's going to be such an emotional roller coaster ride. That's what that's going to be. <laughs> so, that's my review on the the Star Wars, um, Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker trailer review. And if you like, subscribe, comment. Um, I'll try to reply to as many as possible. And until next time, guys, I'm excited. Check it out in December.